So can we conclude that Sanders would win in the South if there was a rematch tomorrow? The exit polls are throwing a few wrenches into it. The Democrats have higher turnout than the Republicans. That's hard to make sense of in West Virginia, which is an open primary. So voter registration is entirely irrelevant because you can vote for either party or in fact both parties, regardless of how you've registered. Would West Virginia be in play in the general? Well, hardly. Now, it is true that Trump told people to stay home, so you can at least understand the decrease in Republican turnout that way. But then you can't argue that Sanders is winning crossover Trump votes, because Republican turnout is down, so he must be winning voters that are not at all interested in Republicans. Yet, the exit polls are also suggesting that the voters self-identify as right of center. That is completely inconsistent with the low Republican turnout. It's just a contradiction, flat out. Sanders is apparently doing well with coal miners, which is another contradiction, as his climate policies are far tougher than hers are. I mean, I saw this narrative, but I rejected it as propaganda. The reality is that Sanders will actually eliminate coal jobs, although he'll compensate them for it. Who would actually believe that Clinton is going to do anything other than flop on that for the right price? I mean, I know what she said, but who would possibly believe her? I suppose you could argue that it's just not thought through well, but then why is turnout for Trump so low? If you're voting in favor of coal jobs, you'd have to be remarkably clueless to vote solely for Sanders. Even if you laughably believe what Hillary said, you'd think you'd vote for Trump as well as for Sanders. I do think this is quite ominous for Clinton, as the demographics in West Virginia should overwhelmingly favor her. It's a southern conservative place, she does well in southern conservative places, and race isn't really much of a factor. B but I can't really rule out the possibility that what you're seeing is an ignorant reaction to a bald-faced lie, rather than a general shift in voting attentions among southern conservatives. But the evidence is mounting that there has been a big shift in the southern support. Let's see how she does in Kentucky before we draw any conclusions. Follow up. Yeah, see, this is what Sanders said. While I strongly believe we need to combat climate change to make our planet habitable for our children and our grandchildren, let me be clear. We cannot abandon communities that have been dependent on coal and other fossil fuels. He said, according to prepared remarks of his speech, in my view, we have got to invest $41 billion rebuilding coal mining communities and making sure that Americans in McDowell County and all over the country receive the job training they need for the clean energy jobs of the future. When somebody puts aside $40 billion for retraining in coal communities, you can be pretty sure they're going to shut down the industry more or less for good. So this idea that they were voting for Sanders as a reaction to Clinton's coal comments is something that you ought to discard. It doesn't actually make any sense. That said, we may have worked in the possibility that um, the people of West Virginia voted for exactly what they wanted, which was retraining. It's um, maybe uh, deceptively simple. Um, I don't know, you know, I, I, I'm accusing the um, uh, voters in West Virginia of not really knowing what Sanders stood for. Um, and at the same time, I have to admit that I don't really know what Clinton's policy on retraining is. Um, she says she wants to shut the coal plants down. Um, what is she going to do to compensate? Um could very well be that uh, Sanders' proposal is simply um, seen as better in terms of how to replace coal. Um, in that case, um, we could um, acknowledge that the coal miners were being rational um, and even thinking about the future. 
I think there's a reason why nobody is pointing this out. Um, but, um, you know, let's be fair here. Let's provide at least a possibility of some agency and at least um, acknowledge that uh, it's not entirely insane for coal workers to vote in favor of retraining. If they realize that um, the industry is dying, right? And maybe that answers the question as to why they didn't vote for Trump. But I mean, it's not like I didn't realize that the comments were likely to upset people. It's just I couldn't imagine anybody voting for Sanders as a response. The rational thing to do would be to vote for Trump. Like I say, unless you're resigning yourself um, to the necessity to actually shut down these these coal sites, and you're looking at the two options, and you're saying, okay, what Sanders is offering is better for my family than what Clinton is offering, right? But voters don't have perfect information. In fact, in places like West Virginia, they tend to have very low information. Despite what I just said, I do actually think that it's more likely and entirely reasonable to suggest that they just simply didn't do their research and just foolishly knee-jerked. That is, they heard something on the news or talk radio and that they didn't like, and they voted against that. That is assuming <sighs> that these coal workers that voted for Clinton, um, or sorry, that voted for Sanders, were um, interested in keeping their job, right, rather than looking forward. But here's another strange statistic. Apparently upwards of 40% of voters in the Democratic primary are planning to vote for Trump. Um, which does, you know, <laughs> uh, cast some doubt there, right? Um, just a second, it's, uh, I turned the heat down, um, so I'm going to um, adjust my blanket. and shivering there, right? So yeah, um, I'm, I'm being trying to be fair and uh, less condescending um, by giving them a little agency, but um, a, a substantial proportion of them are claiming they're going to vote for Trump and are in fact conservatives. Um, you know, so this idea that you know, maybe there's some secret liberals there. Well, maybe there are some. It doesn't seem to really come out in the numbers, right? And I think you need to remember, this is, this is also a state where you get significant numbers of write-ins. It seems like West Virginians don't really take the process seriously. Um, it, it, it's kind of a joke, right? Which, maybe it is, right? Maybe they're just able to see things a little bit more clearly. Or maybe not, right? I think the broader takeaway from West Virginia is that it's gone down the rabbit hole. What you really see in the numbers is a level of cynicism that exists only in the realm of the surreal. And so trying to predict results in West Virginia or analyze results um, if, you know, that have already happened is it, sort of pointless. You're assuming an inherent rationality that isn't actually there. Um... I think that uh, this primary election in West Virginia, on the Democratic side at least, is one of those situations where trying to make sense of it is just going to, you, you'll just be driving yourself mad. Um, the, the, there isn't a consistency there. Um, and I think that, uh, I just want to be careful. Ugh. I'm not supposed to be tired um, of what happens, right? I think it's clear that my analysis was actually accurate. Uh, in the Democratic primary, sorry, voters in the Democratic primary were overwhelmingly conservative and broadly fit the same demographic patterns that voted heavily for Clinton in surrounding states. They just refused to behave rationally and may have actually taken pleasure in it. 
I, I've pointed out a few times that I'm not an American. While I certainly know more about American geography than most Americans know about Canadian geography, I do have a limit to my understanding. So this is the question I need a real answer to. Just how similar is Kentucky to West Virginia? Are we going to get these same kind of surreal results that defy any kind of real logic? Or is it going to align you know, more with states like Tennessee? It's a big question. Because it really defines whether Sanders is still competitive. Did he win West Virginia by cynicism or by enthusiasm? And what about the states around there? And the other states coming up as well. So can it be projected to states that voted weeks or months ago or not? I had suggested that if Sanders wins in a state like West Virginia that is so heavily tilted towards Clinton, it should cast some doubt, right? But if you look at the numbers a little bit more closely, um, you realize that um, the outcome was more the result of a lot of jackasses. Um, that we're just fucking with the system, right? Is that what we're going to see moving forward? Republicans voting for Sanders for the hell of it? Just to piss people off? Or is there a real movement there? And is that real movement actually changing opinions? Or changing the opinions of people that have already voted? I like that. Um, unfortunately, West Virginia doesn't really help. Although, um, you know, in, in the broader, if you zoom out a little, um, I'm sure it'll become apparent that uh, that there's uh, some kind of pattern there. Yeah, uh, I, I I just got really tired and lost my train of thought um, all of a sudden. So um, I think I'm gonna get a little bit.